Live from our studios here at Koko Mlemle in Accra, this is Joy News Prime with me, Carlos Caloni. In the next 60 minutes, two UK-based firms, Economic Intelligence Unit and Fit Solutions predict victory for former President John Mahama in next year's presidential elections. And back home, John Mahama himself has been campaigning in the Bono region where he accuses the NPP of driving the economy into a ditch. Your boss, no VIP, I had echo according to no, a cotto ditch. And Parliament approves $800 million cocoa syndicated loan for Cocoa Ball to purchase cocoa from farmers. The minority warning the NPP is running Cocoa Ball aground. And Chief Justice convinces jurors in the Ashanti region to call off their two week old strike after assuring them the arrears will be paid. Now, former President John Mahama is likely to win the 2024 presidential elections. That's the prediction by two UK-based firms, Economics Intelligence Unit and Fit Solutions. Now, according to the EIU, Ghana is likely to experience a transfer of power from the ruling New Patriotic Party to the opposition National Democratic Congress, the NDC, largely driven by declining living standard, limited job opportunities, and poor public services. Now, Fit Solutions, on the other hand, says the ruling party is unlikely to remain in power, with former President Mahama expected to win the swing regions by nearly 48% against Vice President Baumia's 29%. Now, we have both camps reacting to this shortly. First, let's hear the details about this particular report. Now, that's the report there you have on your screen. And... Um, it's raised that numerous major African countries will hold presidential and legislative elections in 2024, including Algeria, Botswana, Ghana, Mauritius, Mozambique, Namibia, Rwanda, South Africa, and Tunisia. Now, incumbent regimes are expected to prevail in most of the elections, but there is a heightened risk of reduced parliamentary majorities and much more challenging governing conditions. It goes on to say, in some states, anti-incumbency sentiment and widespread discontent with the performance of current government will prompt a transfer of power to the opposition. Now, Ghana is likely to experience a transfer of power from the ruling New Patriotic Party to the opposition National Democratic Congress, largely driven by declining living standards, limited job opportunities, and poor public services so here is a senior analyst for south saharan africa at the fish solution mike kronega at this point um we believe that the the opposition national democratic congress or the ndc is best placed uh, to win the election multiple surveys have shown that the economy will be the most important point for voters in the upcoming election which will give the ruling new patriotic party or npp a disadvantage given that the recent economic downturn happened under NPP leadership. So if you take a look at the uh, at recent polls, which I've included on the, the right-hand side uh, of this slide, um, you will see that the NDC's leader, John Mahama, is, is not only leading in the Volta OT and northern regions, areas uh, typically favoring the NDC anyway, uh, but also in swing regions and even in Akan regions, which usually lean towards the NPP. So as for now, it seems pretty likely that the NDC will uh, manage to secure a majority in the December 2024 uh, election. So how much of confidence must political parties attach to this uh, particular story? Now, joining us on phone is Mustafa Bande, he is the Deputy General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, and Haruna Mohamed, he is the NPP Deputy General Secretary. Gentlemen, welcome to Join News Prime. Uh, let me start off with the opposition and with you, Mustafa Bande. How is the Mahama camp actually receiving and reacting to this projection from the two reputable institutions? Hello, Mustafa. I think that we... Yeah, proceed, sir. I think that is... Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Please proceed. Yeah, I think that... Uh... It's a good, a good report, mm. but there is no complacency for the NDC. 
as far as this report is concerned. The focus of the flag bearer and the NDC is to place ourselves in the position where we offer solutions to the problems created by the MPP Nanado Baumia led government. And so for us, mm. yes, it's a good news, but there is no complacency for us to rest. We will not sleep until we win the total confidence of Ghanaians, hoping that we are coming to offer solutions to their problems. We're coming to put food on the table. We're coming to reduce corruption. Mm. We're coming to up our infrastructure deficits. Okay. Corruption is one topical issue at our hand. To be able to hold government and government officials responsible for causing financial loss and for those who have taken monies that belong to the people of Ghana, mm. the end should be in the position to get them refund same to the republic. All right. That is one of our biggest priority coming into government, apart from coming to solve unemployment issues, mm. uh, offering a platform for Ghanaians to prosper. I think that is one thing Ghanaians want which is why the flag bearer is engaging with stakeholders mm. across the country to pick up their thoughts, their mind, as far as their problems, and also factor that into our manifesto in terms of a roadmap, how we are coming to resolve those challenges. Okay, Mustafa, hold it for me. Let me go to Haruna also. So uh, does this projection actually uh, make you shake? Um, I mean, those of you in the NPP and how the Baumia campaign will be going? Uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to say good evening to my brother Mustafa Bandi. Mm. I think that he should be the most excited person now. Uh, also, good evening to your cherished viewers out there. I think that the MPP is not moved at all. We are not moved at all. Uh, this is not something that uh, uh, moves us as a political party. Mm. Uh, um, I think that this report has been released on the 15th of uh, November 2023. Um, I've had synopsis of the report right through. Uh, the New Patriotic Party uh, is not going to throw this report mm. away. Uh, we believe in such data, and this data will be referred to um, the research directory of our party. Uh, we'll look at it critically and ask certain questions uh, with regard to what variables have been used to arrive at this uh, conclusion. We'll also be looking at uh, other matters that have been discussed in that report. Mm. Uh, going through, I've seen that um, there is no adequate disclosure of why uh, uh, the MPP is unlikely. The key word that is used in there is unlikely. So the unlikely in there, mm. and you also look at the, the, the date on which the polling data was gathered, was mm. October 2023. Vis a vis as against uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who was not a candidate in October 2023. Mm. So, this report could be on conjecture and prediction, and the kind of people, the target people that have been interviewed, has not been disclosed to us. Is that to say so you are doubting the credibility of the two institutions that carry out this particular study? Um, I have, I, I, I have the opportunity to discuss that report mm. and either to ask the necessary questions. That's what I'm saying. I ask for the variables that have been used and also question the polling data is in October 2023. And as of 2023, mm. October, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia was not the flag bearer of the new patriotic party. Mm. We were in competition at that time. You could ask his opponent who believe in the credentials of Adda, the, the, his own candidate that he believes will win. And you would come to a conclusion that could not be a representation of the entirety. Mm. So for us, we'll look at the data. These are the major questions that the New Patriotic Party will be looking to All ask. Right. All right. But I'm, 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 I'm very surprised that <laughs> my brother is saying that they will provide the solution. Mm. Uh, the NDC will provide solutions. He so, talked about corruption. They have a candidate who was corrupt in his own self. Okay, he Haruna, we, we, we will go into that conversation uh, respectfully, but I'm curious about how the party feels about the projection of the Akan regions that is actually putting John Mahama ahead of your candidate. How do you react to that specific projection? Because the Akan region happens to be 
the NPP stronghold over the years. Uh, how are you reacting to that particular uh, portion of the like projection? Like I said, I said we will look at that data. Mm. The data mentioned in the account regions is not specific. You read the report. The report is very scanty. We have not been provided with the adequate information to be able to diagnose mm. what exactly are they talking about in the account regions. And I've also made it very clear to you. The candidate they are using now was not a candidate in October 2023. And we all know, Carlos, if you refresh your memory, uh, we're told that the MPP will win 2016 election, but it will go into a runoff that uh, candidate Akufuado will get 49%. And uh, candidate Mahama and sitting president will get 44%. It never went to uh, uh, runoff. So these are things that we have to interrogate All right. and able to analyze to see whether it will be able to stand the test of time. Okay. So uh, hold, hold it there. Let me speak to uh, Mustafa Bande also. Um, you know, your counterpart uh, appears not to be uh, so much uh, interested in the uh, report. I mean, he's questioning the basis for the report. So uh, from where you see it, is this going to actually shape your strategy uh, for the electionary campaign, uh, the NDC side? For, for us, what is manifesting in this report mm. is the fact that the MPP has currently left a governance of huge corruption. They've left a governance that the people have regretted voting for them. They themselves, the Asante Regional Minister, accepts to also for that all the projects, infrastructure projects they have started which in subsequent, in other conversations, they claim they have completed. He asserts that they have not done those projects. So what is manifesting is the fact that they have failed. Now, Aruna is talking about referral examination. When you have already been failed, you want to go back to the drawing board and you don't accept that you have failed. Mm. So I would wish that the MPP would humbly say that, yes, we admit that we are failed, we've been thrilled, instead of criticizing the report, because you didn't have the general secretary of the NDC writing this report. These are intellectuals who have done their own analysis and have come with the report. So if the, the report was favoring government, Haruna would not be making the kind of comments he's making. All right. Ghanaians are suffering. Ghanaians have seen how corrupt the president is. Ghanaians have seen how corrupt its appointees are. Ghanaians are living in the villages with bad roads, no hospitals. They are living the evidence of bad governance. And you are sitting on radio and denying. All right. And so for us, it puts a bigger burden on His Excellency John Zamani Mahama and the NDC coming into power with a clear objective of coming to solve the problems created by this government. The difficulty for us is how to confront all the deficits, mm. governance deficits that they have created. They have already created a the problem. They've messed up the economy. Okay. GD is going down. But the difficulty is that NDC must find solutions for all these problems so that Ghanaians would have a better standard of living. Ghanaians will have confidence restored in governance. That is what the NDC and John Dramani Mahama is about. So this report is good for us going forward. It directs our path. It gives us a clearer picture as to what is going to happen in the next few days. Aruna claims that uh, the report predicted in 2016, 20, uh, 2020 uh, never happened. Everyone knows that the 2020 election was rigged. If it was allowed to be fairly, it would have gone into a runoff. Or NDC would have won overwhelmingly. And so let him not sit on radio and deny what is factual and what Ghanaians are experiencing. All right, Mustafa. He's rather insulting the conscience of the people. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll leave it there. But let me give you the final word, Haruna. Will this particular report shape or reshape your strategy towards the 2024 election campaigns? Correct, my good brother. We are not on radio. We are on television. And uh, additionally, I have not made reference to 2020 elections. Uh, if you are making reference to 2020 elections, you yourself know your national chairman now said that you never had data and you never even collated results for any data to be rigged in favor of any political party. It's very unfortunate that the NDC, when they listen, comprehension becomes a major problem for that. I still stand by the 
point that the MPP will look at that data and we will, write, we will ask the right question. All right. Uh, NDC is never the party that is going to proffer any solutions to us, more especially that they have a candidate in John Ramani Mahama, who himself has admitted in his 314 page booklet that he has never proffered any solution. He can't take any decision for himself. And he manifested that by appointing three wise men to guide him. We had unemployment problems under John Ramani Mahama. He left nurses unemployed. He left teachers unemployed. Public sector was hung. We had to go for uh, uh, what we call policy credibility. Policy credibility at the IMF. Okay. We have to take the MPP to come back. If when you talk about corruption, John Mahama is one person that Professor Mills even asked he should be investigated. And he, as a person, was investigated by Shrine. All right. Ha ha Haruna, we, we, we thank you so, so much for your time here. Haruna Mohamed is the Deputy uh, General Secretary for the NPP as well as uh, Mr. Gbande for the side of the NDC. Now, still on politics, former President Mahama says the present NPP government has driven the country into a ditch. According to him, all sectors of the economy are presently at a standstill. He believes the NDC has a proven track record and will return the country to the path of development if voted into office in 2024. He spoke at a meeting with the Wenchi Traditional Council as part of a two-day tour of that region. My colleague Nana Yaojima is on tour and has filed this particular report. The exercise will focus on meeting the electorate while announcing his bid to regain power as president. The concerns gathered on the tour will feed into the NDC's manifesto for the 2024 general election. John Mahama paid a courtesy call on the Wenchi Traditional Council. Paramount Chief Osajefo Ampim Anye Amwapong Tabraku III emphasized the lack of development in the area and called for prioritization of agriculture development. <laughs> We have an agricultural-based economy, but we have not been very successful with it. We have a farm college with at least 400 students. We want you to upgrade the college when you come into government. You know the benefits of agriculture. I hope when she becomes the best when it comes to agriculture in Ghana. According to the former president, after over 30 years of constitutional rule, the country is yet to witness the expected development. He says presently the country is in a ditch. Echo according to no, a cotton ditch. Na a year say, Ye na be boat near some, na ye ye a bass no as a sequence. The bus on which we are traveling has fallen in a ditch, and we all have to help get it back on the road. The only political party that can develop this country is the NDC. To me, who say, and put to Oba Emma Gana Kuninim. Sir, NDC. So we think there's a need for the NDC to return and to restore the bus for the journey. The country is in a difficult place. The economy is part. The country is in debt. And no my thing. Is it as I must say? A car am many. Ghana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus on your friend of bankrupt. Touching on agricultural development, Mr. Mahama reviewed the NDC's plan to build a cashew processing plant in the Bono region for agricultural transformation. Yeah, baby. Agriculture. Any agro processing. When we come into power, agriculture and agricultural processing will be a priority. We will develop them together. If an era grows cassava, a processing plant will be developed there. Agro processing. Now the bunch of factory, 
Punahafu leads cashew production in the country, so we will give it the deserved attention. Meanwhile, the former president, Mahama, has a short of willingness to complete stored projects in the area. We are not like the others who refuse to redeem their promises. We don't go about promising people. I want all to exercise restraint because the NDC brings development. I am not new to Wenchi. I have known the place since my childhood. The place is not as developed as expected. We know issues of chieftaincy has dragged development. For Joy News, Nanaya Ochima, Bono Region. Let's now take you to Parliament, where a minority in Parliament are warning that Cocoa Board will collapse soon if aggressive measures are not taken to rein in the institution. Now, Cocoa Board has been making billions of cities in losses every year since 2017, with a minority attribute to reckless and incompetent management. Now, speaking during the consideration of an $800 million facility to purchase cocoa from farmers, Minister for Agriculture Dr. Brandy Champot attributed the losses of Cocoa Board's commitment the rural sector and also payment to keep the light on. Board is back on track. And I, I say so with, with high confidence. Yeah, yes, indeed, Cocoa Farmers, Cocoa Board was in crisis. And Cocoa Board was in crisis because Cocoa Board is paying for the lights to be on by paying for Buida, Cocoa Board, Cocoa Board is paying for Buida. Mr. Speaker, Cocoa Board at the moment is constructing almost 5,000 kilometers of roads throughout the country. If we, the people, expect Cocoa Board to be paying for our lives to be on, if we, the people, expect Cocoa Board to be paying for roads to be constructed, if we, the people, expect that Cocoa Board will cut down on cocoa trees and rehabilitate them so that the cocoa farmers will have their cocoa farm back. And by that liability, the strength of that liability weighs down Cocoa Board, then we, the people, cannot stand back and say that Cocoa Board in itself has collapsed. We put a burden on Cocoa Board and we have to make a decision whether we will keep the books clean or we want the roads constructed. We have to make a decision whether we want Cocoa Board to pay for the lights on or we stay in darkness. That is a decision that we have to make. But if we make a decision to construct the roads, if we make a decision to put the lights on, if we make a decision to rehabilitate the cocoa farms, and there is a liability, it will be most unfair to blame us but the minority challenged those claims, insisting the NPP government has since 2017 run Cocoa Board down. Eric Opoku is a ranking member of the Food and Agriculture and Cocoa Affairs Committee. We handed over Cocoa Board to them in 2017. In 2017, they incurred a loss of 395 million Ghana cities. In 2018, the loss came down to 78.2 million. In 2019, it increased to 320 million. Oh, oh. In 2020, it increased again to 426 oh, million. Oh. Mr. Speaker, 2021, it is 2.4 billion oh. Ghana cities. 2.4 billion Ghana cities. Yeah, oh. 24 trillion OCDs. Oh. Just in one year. Yeah, oh. Mr. Speaker, 
in 2022 a jump to 3.3 billion ah. Ghana cities. And the minister says, ah, yeah. the minister is saying that Cocoa Bot is back on track. Why he is projecting a loss of 2.6 billion this year? Okay. Meanwhile, Minority Leader Dr. Kesel Atoforsen threatened his side would have voted against the cocoa syndicated loan if not for the pain it would have cost cocoa farmers. They have projected to record additional losses this year. Their own projections. Their own projections, additional losses. So if care is not taken, and if we fail to do something as a country, as a parliament, cocoa board will go into negative equity. It's because the matter is so severe that the IMF had a reason to report in the official document that went to IMF board that government of Ghana must immediately prepare a policy document to turn around Ghana Cocoa Board. So, Speaker, this is in the this is in this particular statement is captured in the memorandum of economic and financial policy that went to IMF board last year. The speaker, this is a serious matter. I don't think this is a matter that we should litigate on. It is a matter that we should come together as a house and get Cocoa Board to do the right thing. The truth is that this loan, me, as I sit here, I'm approving it largely because of the farmer. Other than that, this is a matter that we should have rejected. But Majority Leader Oseche Mensa Bonsu argued the NDC MPs were just clutching on straws. We agree that it's a wise business decision. How then do we turn around to say that it was deliberate to cheat on the farmers? How do you reconcile the two statements? Mr. Speaker, cocoa sector, we must agree as the minister said, is growing. And indeed, if you look at the statistics, Mr. Speaker, page 23 of the 2023 budget clearly shows this, that in 2014, the cocoa sector grew by 4.3%. In 2015, in 2015, it grew at negative 8 in 2016, negative 7 percent. In 2017, it grew at 9.2 percent. So when the ranking member gets up and saying that cocoa, cocoa sector is collapsing, Mr. Speaker, it's difficult for me to comprehend. You're still watching Join News Prime with me, Carlos Caloni. We'll take a break. We'll return with more. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, members of the Giros Association in the Ashanti region have promised to call off their two-week strike and return to the court. Now, this was after meeting with Chief Justice Getro Tokuno on the matter. Now, at the end of the meeting, Chief Justice Getru Tokono promised to follow up on the arrears or the jurors on condition they return to the court. Former of the Juror Association says they will resume work on Monday. My colleague Nana Mwachi Yadom was in the appeals court complex in Kumasi where the meeting took place and filed this report. Near two weeks of strike by the Juro Association of the Ashanti region to demand some 10 months on paid arrears owed them by government. Today, in a fruitful meeting with Chief Justice Gertrude Tukono, the Chief Justice says the arrears owed the jurors must be paid. She criticized the fact that these arrears are not paid, but promised to follow up. We agreed on systematic uh, models moving forward, ensuring that um, weaknesses in the system such as double empaneling, um, too few jurors, all of that is removed very quickly. And we agreed on following on their um, allowances uh, to make sure that it, it, it's paid early. But I think also critical for us, for us to remember is that most of them are public servants. And so they're being 
pay their salaries. So in the interest of Mother Ghana, allowances should not lead to strike. Which means that at the end of this meeting, the Jews will be calling off their strike. Is that they promised me they will do so, and I know they will. Which is so, as soon as possible. They have promised, and I know they will keep to their promise. <laughs> but foreman of the Juro Association of the Ashanti Region, Albert Aka, says they would be returning to court on Monday. He says they are officially calling off their strike. Uh, we, she has asked us to return to court on Monday, and uh, we have agreed to return to court. And uh, as uh, she promised, she said she's going to make sure that our allowance are paid in time. So on Monday, yes, why not? She said, our mother, this is what that we, we were expecting long ago. And uh, uh, she has been in Kumasi with us. And uh, she has even shown that she actually, actually respects jurors in Kumasi. So that alone, we are grateful. We are grateful for her. So on Monday, we are, we are coming. I will talk to my people on the platform, those who came and those who couldn't come, that on Monday we are, we are coming to court uh, to perform our duties, uh, our duties that uh, the state has assigned uh, us to perform on Monday after meeting Chief Justice. We have resolved everything, so Monday we are coming to court. After this fruitful meeting with the Chief Justice, her ladyship Gertrude Tukono, the jurors are expecting their 10 months arrears. For Joe News, my name is Nana Bwachi Dankwa Yadom, the Appeal Court Complex, Kumasi. Away from that story, the Healthcare Federation of Ghana is urging private health sector players to take advantage of the available digital platforms to enhance their services. According to the Federation, this will not only address the issues of longer queues mostly witnessed at the hospitals, but will ensure efficiency. There's more in the following report. Facilities in Ghana often face congestions due to reliance on manual systems for accessing patients' health data. This not only causes delays in healthcare delivery, but in severe cases results in the loss of lives. Dr. Maxwell Entry, Country Director of Farm Access Group Ghana, and board member of Healthcare Federation of Ghana advocates the adoption of digital platforms by private health sector players. What we need to build on uh, 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 some of the issues around how do we innovate new ways of service delivery that takes advantage of the digital revolution and digital transformation that we have seen in the telco industry, that we have seen in the hospitality industry, that we have seen in the transportation industry, Suddenly, ride-hailing Ubers have transformed our environment. How do we see same models uh, or similar models uh, playing out in the healthcare sector? So that's one big bucket that we need to work on. The second one that we need to work on is how do we support the political class to make uh, informed inputs into party manifestos that can help transform our health system. And here, private sector pl uh, players can, 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 can be neutral arbiters in providing research-informed, data-driven position papers and have that discussion with political parties so that these can feed into uh, political party manifestos. First Vice President of the West African Private Healthcare Federation, Dr. Linda Ajuadeka, has however raised concerns about the current state of healthcare delivery in the country. My biggest concern is about service standards and in the time that the Federation is in existence and into the future, what I'm looking at is the Federation supporting um, providers to improve standards. Um, this goes across from supply chain to the amount of time you spend in the consulting room to the quality of of service, the quality of goods um, in terms of medical consumables. Give us access to affordable financing. Give us reduced interest rates for, um, for companies that require lending. Um, it's only in improving access to financing that we can reduce the cost of care and improve quality. Meanwhile, Dr. Samuel Donko President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana has signaled its readiness to always partner with the private health service providers to improve the healthcare delivery in the country. 
I think we have a very good relationship. We've always partnered with them, and we believe that with the Federation, it can only get better. And one of the things we expect is that there will be a lot of financial intermediation so that pharmaceutical suppliers would be able to recover their, I mean, their supplies, payment for their supplies on time. That's always been an issue with credit supplies, delays in payments. That usually affects capital. And based on that, a number of, a number of companies, of pharmaceutical companies, need to go out and borrow. When you borrow, you know the associated interest rate. So we believe that with all the financial institutions we heard from today, a bit of financial inter intermediation is what might help us to be able to do better. The Healthcare Federation of Ghana is a country chapter of the African Healthcare Federation, which is affiliated to the AU, aims at promoting and enhancing medical care in Ghana with emphasis on the provision of affordable and accessible quality healthcare. Samuel Mbura, Joy News. More story. President Akufuado has commended Ghana's armed forces for pledging their continuous support for democracy, despite uh, recent coups in the sub region where military takeovers have become fashionable. Speaking at a graduation ceremony at the Ghana Armed Forces Command and Staff College in Accra on Friday, President Akufuado commended and challenged the army to maintain their professionalism. There's more in the following report. <laughs> Helping to maintain peace and security, our men and women in uniform are exposed to the negative effects of wars and undemocratic changes of government. It is therefore praiseworthy that the armed forces continue to pledge their support to our democratic system of governance in the face of coup d'etats across the region. I commend the continuing dedication of our armed forces to upholding constitutional rule in our country. I challenge and encourage you to be committed in maintaining the democratic legacy that your predecessors have set. Cognizance of the terror attacks within the sub region, President Tepufado said, the ongoing construction of some 12 forward operating bases will help thwart any terror threats within and outside Ghana. The imminent threats in the northern part of Ghana have necessitated the establishment of forward operating and logistics bases along our entire northern border. So far, government has awarded contracts for the construction of 12 forward operating bases and three logistic bases to help contain the threats emanating from across our northern frontiers. These operating bases, which are at various stages of completion, will be resourced with adequate personnel and logistics to deal with such threats that have the potential to disrupt the peace and stability of our country. The National College of Defense Studies has also been granted institutional and program accreditation by the Ghana Tertiary Educational Council. The accredited programs are expected to commence at the college at the end of November 2023. Return with Showbiz. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's Friday, and JQ is in studio with Showbiz. Hi, Colors. Yeah. What do you have? Well, where are you going today? Uh, I'm going home to sleep. Oh, today yeah. is Friday. Oh. Yeah. I want to go and sleep. Just want to go and sleep. Yeah. There are a lot of events in town. Mm. Yeah, you should. Which events? There are a lot. We have um, karaoke Friday, karaoke night. You should just pass by East Legon and have fun. Sure, one of these days. Well, anyways, for today, um, as a musician in Ghana, money is crucial, whether secular or gospel stream. Now, two gospel artists, Nasi and Scott Evans, have been sharing their views on contraceptive production companies sponsoring there the is, event. There is a very good side of condom. Mm. Um, 
it's it's it, the purpose of condom is to make sure that people abstain or get don't get diseases mm-hmm. when they have because we cannot control the the, the sexual um um um, yes. um desires of people of this young generation we cannot that the only thing we can do is to make sure that they don't get any diseases <laughs> that can destroy them so honestly if mm. i'm supposed to stand in the gap i'm also working what I said. Mm-hmm. i'm working and at the end of the day we need money to push the kingdom bible we buy bible we do everything okay let's come to the condom thing um females are you people are very sensitive being mm. you know god created you guys differently and your hormonal balance is kind of mm. totally different most of you are not okay with um uh, those uh, uh, contraceptives and when you take it most of women don't like it mm. most of them they will complain that when they take it they kind of they begin to so that's how you have so yeah i'm coming wow. so they begin to gain weight and some of them also kind of said uh, when they take it they kind of have some reactions and stuff like that now see so you see will they share condom that day yeah, I, 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 I'm sure the company will share, will give some, yeah, give away. Well, mm. you know, Carlos, it's funny going for a gospel concert and coming back home mm. with condoms. What no, you there's nothing that? wrong with that. There's I nothing mean, wrong with no, that. No, I don't. So, what's it. your take on circular, um, on gospel musicians um, advertising for? I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Well, yeah. so you wish you know, to HIV. That. It's on the increase. Oh, you're going on that tangent. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, we're moving on. Now, um, let me take you all back to months ago when news hits that Ghanaian musician Black Sharif had been arrested at the airport. After all the tussle and back and forth, he finally becomes victorious in the lawsuit filed against him by Cruz people. Mm. That is Black Sharif. Yeah. Um, he won. I hope you heard of that case. Yeah. He was supposed to perform at an event and he breached the contract. Yeah, and, exactly. And they dragged him to um, court. But um, all the same, we have um, another lawsuit. Mm. Um, that is for the international show. But so the music industry has been shaken by serious allegations as singer Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, steps forward accusing music mogul um, Didi, widely recognized, um, of harrowing acts of rape, sexual assault, sex trafficking, and many more. Now, the lawsuit filed under the New York's Adult Survivors Act exposes disturbing details of Cassie's relationship with Didi. Now, moving forward, um, Carlos, I hope you know who our current GJA um, Journalist of the Year is. I know. Who is our it? own Erastus. Yes, our mm. very own. Yeah. And now, in the new episode, or mm. the current episode of Personality Profile, which airs tonight, um, he is... On, and I'm expecting a lot more on this. What are you expecting? Uh, a lot, you know, on the Galamse issue yeah. and his uh, personal life, how he's been able to manage personal life and all these uh, reports and all that. I'm interested in that. I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, personally, mm. I would love to get to know how he got there because I'm sure it's been a very long, long yeah. journey for yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, this all evening. Right. That's all for this bulletin. You can log on to myjoyonline.com for more story. My name is Carlos Scaloni. Thank you so much for watching. Prime Business is up next.